Traders, if you are still building strategies by combining multiple indicators and hoping to get a good strategy, then you are in for a shock because most likely you will be a losing trader. The truth is you need to understand the structure of a strategy. Now I discuss this thoroughly in my Algo Trading Masterclass and basically every strategy needs an entry and exit and a strategy filter. From my point of view, strategy filters are the most underrated concepts for all traders. And that's why in this video, I will discuss volatility strategy filters. Volatility is the top filter to add to any strategy. Here is the truth. Winning traders are all about managing risk, while losing traders are more about the win rate. And number one reason you want to add a strategy filter is to reduce drawdown. And the number one category of filters that reduce drawdown are volatility filters. So we will test four type of volatility filters to see which one works the best and how volatility filters help your strategy. Now, in order to do this properly, we need a strategy that is simple and we already know its performance. And of course, the best thing comes to my mind is the RSI2 strategy. This is a classic strategy. I featured it in hundreds of videos on this channel for the past five years, and it's still performing well. And I understand every trade in this strategy completely. So I can immediately spot weaknesses or strength by adding anything to that strategy. For this test, I will use strategy Quantex. SQX is really suited for this type of testing because you can quickly validate an idea and automate it. So in SQX, we go to AlgoWizard and I build the strategy already is the RSI look back of two, lower than 25, we go long. And when the RSI look back of two, greater than 75, we exit. We also have a 10 day exit number of bars. So in case, this condition does not happen we exit after 10 bars now just to let you know that this is not the peak performance of the strategy but any value here will work and it doesn't matter what you pick we can still perform the test the idea of this video came from a student of the algo trading masterclass the guy built a portfolio of mirror version strategies because of they've been running hot for the past five years and of course, when he started, we are in a drawdown and he panicked, but then he found out that volatility filters were the best thing had he used them. And here is why. So this is the regular strategy. And if we go to the equity chart and if we switch the drawdown to open in dollars, we can see that the recent uh, drawdown is the biggest in the amount of dollars. So if you start anywhere here, this is a huge drawdown. Of course, in perspective, it is not the biggest drawdown in percent. Now, remember, this is a basic strategy and you are not going to trade this basic strategy without a filter. You can also have a look here and you can see the return per year. And this is the drawback. So January, February of 2025 started really good. And then March, April, we are in a drawdown. We recovered some in May. So shout out to Eric for the video idea and let's jump in. So on this chart, we see three indicators. These are all based on volatility. So we have the ATR and when the ATR rises, that means we have higher volatility. When it goes down, lower volatility. Next, we have Bollinger Band with ratio. Same concept, if it's rising, we have higher volatility falling lower volatility and the third indicator i have is the standard deviation same concept rising is higher volatility falling is lower volatility now of course they will overlap but they are not exactly the same and the fourth indicator i will add to these is stat oasis market regime filters these are proprietary filters that are giving to the algo trading masterclass students just I will use it for a comparison. So back to our classic RSI2 strategy, we can make this as a template. If you go to settings, advance, switch this on, and now we can add a random condition. This will give me the chance 
to add a single condition to this strategy. So the strategy will always be the same. And then we will pick one of the indicators to add to see the effect. So in Builder, I loaded the strategy and all these options will not matter except for the number of conditions. So I'm setting the number of conditions to one only. That means we can only add one condition at a time. And then for the data, I chose the S&P 500 using a single contract, no commission, no slippage. And then for the building blocks, we need only to pick the enter at markets and all these blocks should be not picked. So this is, you see zero blocks, zero blocks and zero blocks. So let's start with ATR. So let me pick the ATR blocks and this covers everything. So when the ATR is rising, when it crosses above a level, falling, when it's higher than a level or lower than a level. And of course, all these will have different sets in between. So you can see the period is randomized uh, between minimum and maximum step of one. The level is randomized between zero and 100 step of five. So we will have a lot of randomization here as a filter. Now I'm not doing any cross check and in ranking, this is very important. So first to pick the right ranking filters, we need to find out what is the current strategy is doing. So this is our current strategy. We're making 180,000, 363 trades, 75% win rate, and about $500 on average per trade. So if the filter is used, then we will have less trades. So if we want to pick a filter that reduces our uh, number of trades, then we need to go more than 5%. So let's pick 10%. So my filter has to reduce the number of trades by 10%. So in this case, we have 363 trades. So 10% is about 36 trades. So anything below 320 should be good. So let's go back to builder and ranking filters. Number of trades is lower than uh, 3. 30. Let's go 325. Okay. But at the same time, I want more than 85 trades. I don't want my strategy to have four really good trades and be done. So 85 is a good compromise. Then we go to the average trade. My average trade is 500. So I want a better average trade. And same thing for the profit factor and return to drawdown. So I want return to drawdown better than 415 and profit factor better than 155. So here I have a profit factor 1.6, return to drawdown better than 4.5. The ranking filters now will filter out everything that is lower than this. So basically any strategy we will get will be better than the original strategy. Not necessarily though, it's better in net profit because I didn't add net profit. Of course, I can add net profit, but my main concern is to reduce the drawdown. So I will accept lower profits if I get higher return to drawdown ratio. Okay, so we go to progress and let's start building. And I will stop the building around 50 strategies. So we got 53 strategies now. Let's pick all of them and let's rename it to ATR. So this will add the ATR so we can distinguish the filter. Now we go back to full settings again, building blocks, and this time we will pick the standard deviation. So here is standard deviation and we will pick all the blocks. Again, all these will have ranges, so they will have multiple values and we can get hundreds of strategies using them. And I will keep everything else as the same. We just want to test the filter. And I will stop it with also another 50 strategies. Okay, so that was really fast. I couldn't catch it that time. Uh, and we need to rename these guys. So let me pick them. And let's rename them with standard deviation. And now for the Bollinger Band. Now in SQX, Bollinger Bands are a little bit different. See, this used the bar close above lower band bar close above upper band after open below and then lower band is falling lower band is rising so none of these 
are volatility based. I mean, when the lower band is falling, we don't know what's happening to the upper band. So if the upper band is rising, that means, yes, we have volatility expanding. So we don't have a block that is using Bollinger Bands that is about volatility. But we can easily mitigate that by building our own. So if we go to Algo Wizard, Custom Blocks, and we can build our own. So add a block and give it any number you like. So Bollinger Band Width. And this should be a condition. Because remember, this is a filter. It has to be true or false. Let's save it and click on it. And now add the first condition. So if you type BB, you will get these regular ones and then you will get something else. So you have BB range and BB width ratio. So let's use the width ratio. So width ratio, and it's greater than the same thing. So BB width ratio. And the, what we're looking for is the ratio either expanding or contracting. So that's measuring the bands of the Bollinger Bands if it's expanding or contracting. So this needs to be zero. So we're comparing the current bar with the previous bar. Now, in order for this to have many different variations, we need to vary these numbers through variables. So let's add two variables. And let's call this the look back. So click on this, change it to period and the standard deviation. So double. Now the period could be 20 as default. And the standard deviation could be two as default. But then we can change it. So the period could go from four to 24, step two. And then the standard deviation can go from 0.5 let's say to two and a half step point to five. Of course, you can change this as you like. Then click on 20. And now we pick the look back and standard deviation. We pick standard deviation. So that's done. Do the same here. Look back, standard deviation, and it's done. So now this block, it's a filter that is basically volatility is expanding because the width of the bands is bigger than the width of the bands in the previous bar. So we can immediately do the opposite. So if I right click and say duplicate, then go to this one and I can say this is volatility down and I only need to switch this. So instead of bigger, I can go I can go is lower. And that's it. Everything else is the same. And of course, this is the opposite of this. So if you click on nut set here in the opposite block, you can choose existing and I will choose the opposite block. And now SQX will understand to use these in opposites. So in order to speed up the video, I built all these already. So Bollinger Band with volatility up, volatility down. Volatility up for multiple bars and down for multiple bars. There is also Bollinger Band range. And again, I did the same volatility up, down, up multiple bars, down multiple bars. So now if I go back to Builder, instead of picking these Bollinger Bands, I will pick my blocks that I built. So we pick them and there are eight blocks and now we run, everything else is the same. So I'm just gonna run it for 50 strategies. Again, that was too fast. Let's stop it and let's go up. So pick all strategies, rename, and let's call this BB. And now I will pick the StatOasis volatility filters. These are proprietary filters only for Algo Trading Masterclass students. So I will pick these, which are eight blocks, but I have other here down. So they are, again, it's all about volatility. And let's go back to progress again. Everything else is the same. So same ranking, uh, same data, same everything. And let's generate also uh, about 50 strategies. And let's rename them to, let's call it Statuaces. So now we have about 250 strategies. They're all RSI 2 below 25. We go along, RSI 2 above 75, we exit. If that doesn't happen, we exit after 10 bars. 
The only difference between all these 250 strategies is the filter we are using. All the filters are volatility based. So we are not picking and choosing from different categories. So if I sort by the ulcer performance index, this is very close to return to drawdown ratio, but uh, it's a better representative because SQX doesn't include the intraday drawdown in this calculation, but you can use both regardless, it doesn't matter. So let's pick the top 10 from each. So I kept 36 strategies from the four categories. And if we sort by net profit, the best one is ATR and the best win percent, it's uh, stat wastes and the best average trade. It's uh, mix ATR standard deviation stat wastes and best return to drawdown stat wastes. Uh, best uh, ulcer performance index, uh, statuases, then ATR, and what else we have? Maximum trade station, intraday drawdown, uh, statuases, and so on and so forth. Now we can also build a portfolio from these strategies. So even though it's the same market, same strategy logic, we're only using a different volatility filter, but you can see the Discrepancy between, look at this one, 114 trades and this one, 304 trades. So they are definitely different. So if we take these strategies into Portfolio Master, and we can instruct Portfolio Master to build a portfolio between two and five strategies. And let's see what we get. So here are a hundred portfolios. And if we go by net profit, so this one is two strategies. This one is three strategies and you can see the curves of each strategy. And this is our out of sample. And you see now by combining several strategies with different volatility filters, we reduce our drawdown because now we're not adding all the drawdowns at the same time. The takeaway here is strategy filters is extremely, extremely important in any strategy. And volatility filters is the top of strategy filters. Almost always a volatility filter will enhance your strategy in terms of return to drawdown ratio. And really it doesn't matter which filter you use. Like, I mean, here we tested the ATR, Bollinger Band, Standard Deviation, and Stat Oasis Market Regime. Now, all of them are based on standard deviation. They are all measuring standard deviation in some way, in some form. But because they use different calculations, they will produce different outcome. And the idea is not to pick the best, but the idea is to combine these into a portfolio. If you like this video, then you will love the next one.